And, uh, and I will begin, and I, as always, I will yell 30 seconds when you have 30 seconds left. Um, and I'm going to start in, in this round with, I think, uh, Miss, because we did not go the second round, I think we're going to go to Mr. Shields for the Conservatives. Or is it Mr. Waugh? Have you changed your round because we missed that last one? Madam Chair, I'm, I'm first on this round. Thank you. All right, Ms. Thomas, uh, for, five, for six minutes, please. Um, Minister, just in your opening remarks and in other places too, you've, you've claimed that your government cares about the spread of misinformation and disinformation. In this bill, in Section 51 of it, um, it would prevent social media platforms like Google from ranking high-quality news sources above lesser quality. It would also prevent them from being able to take down fake news or even give alerts as to news that might be um, incorrect or false altogether. Um, we've heard from experts who have said that this bill would actually then deteriorate journalism um, and the integrity in this industry. Um, it could actually proliferate garbage news as well as clickbait and misinformation. And so I'm wondering if you've been made aware of these serious concerns and if you're willing to make amendments to ensure that this is not the case. Of, of course, I've heard all the conversations and discussions um, uh, around the bill. We've heard the tech trends con uh, concerns. Um, um, and we think that the bill takes that into consideration. The bill simply puts a table in the middle, Ms. Thomas, where those platform giants, tech giants, and the news media across the country uh, get together. Me. Okay. I'm sorry. I was hearing an echo. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Minister? Minute, Minister, sorry, I'll, I'll just ask you to get to the point. I think you know how this works. My question is whether or not you would entertain amendments to help make the bill stronger to ensure that misinformation isn't proliferated. Well, it's simply yes or no, Minister. The way, the, the way, the way I work, Ms. Thomas, is I'm always ready to listen to suggestions, uh, recommendations, as I did in other bills, and those that know me have been there for a okay, while. Okay, great. Thank uh, know you. That Thank you, my Minister. phone is there, you can reach me. Thank you. Um, Minister, my next question has to do with section 24 of the bill. Um, we know that in everyday life that we can use links within our sites, whether it's a blog or our Facebook pages, Twitter, etc. Um, we can share these links and no one is required to pay for doing so. But under this bill, C-18, all of a sudden, DNIs would be required to pay for news links, but only news links. News links would be the only thing on the internet that would be ascribed a monetary value. Um, no other links. All other links can be shared, no problem, no need to pay. Uh, but news links somehow have value. I I'm just curious as to why news links are ascribed a value but other links are not. Why do you feel that this is appropriate? There's nothing that Canadians will pay for links. And I know that you in the past referred to this as Min a tax, Minister, I didn't say I that Canadians be would be paying for links. I said your legislation ascribes a value to them. And I'm curious no, as to why. There's not a value per click. There's not a value per link. What you do is you look at the overall uh, um, um, uh, material that is used by a platform from a media and the negotiation is best based on that overall information that is used. They sit down and they negotiate, but it, there's not a, a, a cost or a fee per link or a click precisely. It's, that's not the, the, the bill. Minister, that's interesting because when you were asked by Mr. Evan Solomon on his news talk show um, or news show, uh, you actually said that when people click a link, there's value for that. I, I can send that direct quote over your way for your review, but we'll leave that question oh, no, I there. Um, uh, Minister, uh, my next question has to do with Section 11.1 AII. And in there, it actually says that DNIs basically must police the news business to make sure that they use the money that they're given in order to advance or support the production of local, regional, and national news content. I'm just curious as to how DNIs will be held accountable for policing this. And, and maybe to begin with, why are DNIs responsible to police this? Why do they need to ensure that this is how the money is used? And how will they make sure that that is the case? And how will they be held accountable? 
Well, you have to understand that the, the, the basis of the bill is to make sure that those big platforms or the tech giants have deals with a large spectrum of media in Canada, right? Big, small, and different regions in your own province and mine, different languages, indigenous, and, and, and all of that. And M they Minister, with all due respect, my question was around policing. Why are DNIs expected to police how money is used mm -hmm. by the news businesses? So, if I may, so once they get those agreements, then they have to go to the CRTC demonstrate that they have the terms of agreements. And then they have to make sure that they have a fair relationship with all those different news news outlets, new media. Minister, with all due respect, again, you're just not answering my question. I'm just curious as to why DNIs are responsible for policing the use of money by news businesses. I'm, I don't understand what you mean by that because... No, I, thank you, Minister. I know you don't understand. That's the point. You don't you, understand you, you this legislation and the implications that it will have on news businesses. Uh, 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 I'll go to my next question. I'll go to my next Thomas, question. Ms. Thomas, Ms. Thomas, please be careful. You are crossing the line in terms of being disrespectful to a witness. Thank you. Go ahead. Minister, my next question is this. Um, would you commit to coming to committee and answering questions, very important questions, many have already been raised today by, by members on all sides here, with regards to Mr. Marouf being given $133,000 by your department. Um, Minister, you were, you were awfully silent when this came up this summer. We haven't heard anything from you yet. We'd love the opportunity to ask you some questions. Would you be willing to come to committee and, and entertain that? Uh, I'm surprised you didn't hear me on this because I condemned it. I said that racism uh, in any form. Excuse me, sorry, uh, sorry, Minister. There is, I think, a problem in the room uh, in which people have their mics turned up very high and they're not muting, so that what we get is a feedback every time the Minister tries to speak or we, there is a feedback. So can I please ask you to mute your mics in the room and only Ms. Thomas, who has the floor, can speak and the Minister, please, can speak so we don't get that back feedback. Thank you. So as, as I said, Ms. Thomas, uh, I condemn this, and as I condemn racism in, in any form... Min Minister, I, I wasn't asking you whether or not you condemn it. I was just simply asking if you'd be willing to come to committee. You invited the minister responsible of the file, Mr. Hussein, who was there. You had the chance to ask the questions to the public servants in charge of the file, and you filibustered the whole Minister, hour, Minister, not, I, I realize that it's in your order. best interest to get away without asking my question, but I, I was just curious if you would be willing to come. So you invited the minister responsible of the file. He was there. The public servants were there. And instead of asking the question, you filibustered. I, I'm, I'm guessing that's a no. No, no to accountability, no to transparency, no to coming to committee. If, if that was important to you, why did you filibuster? Mr. Rodriguez. Hmm? What? I if, beg your pardon? If that was... I didn't hear the last part. But I didn't what was either. I, yeah. Is that if you were so important Min Minister, her, I, I, I just... To the, I, to the witnesses instead of filibustering. Minister... It, it, the money was given under the Heritage Department. You're the Appel minister for that department. Madame la Présidente. Point of order, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, I would like to know where we are regarding time. I'm wondering if uh, we still have some time left uh, in uh, Ms. Thomas's question round. Ms. Thomas has 23 seconds left. Merci, Madam. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. To Ms. Thomas, how she uses her time. If she chooses to use her time to interrupt, then that time counts. Thank you. Minister, I wonder seconds. if Minister, I wonder if you see would see value in us hearing from other witnesses with regards to Bill C-18. So, for example, we haven't heard from copyright experts. We haven't heard from Facebook. We haven't heard from Twitter. Uh, we haven't heard from international trade experts, which the U.S. has, you know, expressed concern. I'm just curious if you feel that perhaps it would be beneficial to hear from experts before continuing to move forward to clause by clause. Well, it's up to you guys to decide, but my advice to you is if you stop filibustering, then you get more, you know, for your buck. Uh, Minister, Thank I was you. just asking you, if Minister you felt Ms. it was a good Thomas. idea to bring witnesses. Ms. Thomas, your time is up. I'm sorry. Your time is up. And now I would like to go to um, Mr. Coteau uh, for, for six minutes, Mr. Coteau. 